speak about today female leadership and the example of Margaret Thatcher. I think that female leadership has gone under an intense round of scrutiny and promulgation of positions of how to do it and prescriptions and descriptions and the whole gamut of academic and practical understandings. But pragmatically, I think we can take examples throughout history of strong female leaders. I'll use Margaret Thatcher because I believe she's the strongest female leader to have existed in the, well, in the, at, at, at least in the Western sphere, but more importantly, in the modern times. So to that, I think we should say that she was obviously a Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She led a Tory government for nigh on across two decades at least. So what this shows us is that she's got the capability to not only obtain leadership, but also retain leadership. So she has that proven capacity, or she had that proven capacity to both lead in times of distress and tumultuousness, but also in times of celebration and the uh, good times, as you may call them, but some you know, bonhomie or whatever you ha may have. And, and what we can take away from this in her ability to be a leader is that I feel it's most impressive to me that she was a leader in such a masculine field. So to be a leader of a female soccer team is perhaps less impressive to me because there's no extension of one's own abilities beyond that which is expected of their their sex or their character or their disposition. So a female and a male disposition are obviously much different. This comes down to hormones, biology a lot of the time, and also some cultural upbringing, institutional effects have a large impact on that. So her ability to substantially impose herself in a position which was considered by default a man's position and that she was able to do it with aplomb and assiduousness which we haven't even seen from other men who have taken that position so to the point where you would not even call her a female leader unless you were analyzing her under that scope you would just call her a leader you would say oh margaret thatcher the prime minister not margaret thatcher the female prime minister so to me that is a good indication that you're an effective person at what you're doing that you do not need this qualification of your position, uh, whether that's the soft bigotry of low expectations or something showing its head in a lot of cases for a lot of people, I, th I think is probably true. Um, but her in, in herself was able to come through the Tory ranks and rise to the point of prime ministerialship where she was able to still, even though it takes quite a lot of selling out to make that position, you have to do a lot of back alley deals and jawboning and, and pissing off a lot of people, she was still able to impart a lot of her own ideologies upon the position and upon the policy. So you have to admire her for that. She was able to wheel and deal and then uh, consequently still able to retain her most of her agency when she was in that position, which is very rare and hard to do in politics, uh, whether or not in, in other leadership positions perhaps in CEOs of companies or or um, local leadership positions or supranational governments or bodies of you know organizations NGOs things like that it's definitely the case in politics that you have to be political and it takes a lot of gumption and grit I would say to to get through that with your head still held high which I definitely believe she had so if I'm a a female seeking to obtain leadership position I definitely look to her strengths, not necessarily this whole nouveau chic, um, what we call poppycock perhaps, that these likes of Sheryl Sandberg will trot out to you. So they espouse these kind of feel good -y bromides with no actual backing of it other than, oh, look at me, this is what I did, and here's how you do it, rather than actually understanding that she's not a good female leader, she's not a good role model in a lot of ways, and I wouldn't take her success mean anything other than a lot of her cronyism and, and, and privilege in the positions that she was able to obtain, not necessarily through her own um, qualifications and hard work, but through guile and, and other such um, more nefarious means. So with Margaret Thatcher, we look at how she was able to impart femininity in a way that isn't so egregious that it takes away from her ability to lead. So she was a female leader in a masculine field 
imparting upon everyone who witnessed her just leadership, but in a female sense rather than a feminine leadership in a general sense, which I believe is to be the embodiment of what it should be to be a female leader. And if there are any females watching or you know of any females who are uh, aspiring to be leaders, that this is probably a very important take. And I would suggest to read up a lot on Margaret Thatcher, her stoicism, her ability to cope with stress and her routines and everything about her that really speaks to her drive and her ability to succeed.